I'm so happy because we have some Starfield to discuss. What has been going on with Starfield? Despite the game having the largest launch ever for Bethesda, shortly thereafter things... Imagine you're Bethesda. It's day one of the Starfield launch and it's looking absolutely amazing. Millions of copies sold. Let's ignore the fact that it was uh, free on the Xbox Game Pass day one, which is a huge red flag. But anyway, millions of copies sold. Reviews absolutely stellar. 10 out of 10 through all the game journalists that were not being paid off because if they... Uh, saying negative things about Starfield, they're never gonna get Elder Scrolls 6. The, ignore that, it was amazing, people were happy, every Bethesda fanboy in the universe obviously went and bought it on Steam and instantaneously put a glowing review. And then not even two days in, everyone collectively is screaming into the void that this game is so shit that they wanna have the memories erased of even playing or knowing of it. Man, that's tough. It's very rapidly declined with huge player drop-off and dwindling review scores. That was the story of 2023, but to kick off 2024, things actually got even Burst. a little bit worse. Yes. But in a couple of months since then, we have gotten several... Okay, I can explain actually this. I knew he's gonna say verse. So, the reason why Starfield is constantly getting just more and more and more negative reviews is because... Actually, of what I already said... When, when a Bethesda game launches, everyone instantaneously buys it on PC, aka Steam. All the, st uh, all the Bethesda fanboys are instantaneously buying it there. Why? Because mods. Mods are always going to be on PC first, so that's where they obviously do it. Because even they absolutely have n uh, no hope for the, uh, for the fact that the base game is going to be playable or good. So they, they do that. And that's where all the positive reviews were. All the Bethesda fanboys as one instantaneously uploaded it. And now that time has passed and there are no Bethesda fanboys left to buy it and upload it, uh, normal people who completely missed the conversation about Starfield are slowly trickling in. And they're like, hmm, Starfield, wow, interesting, a space game, wow, that's pretty cool, I'm gonna try it. And a normal person who has no idea what Bethesda is, what Starfield is, or any of this, they just play it for probably less than an hour, and they're like, wow, this is just a shitty loading screen simulator. Negative review, have a nice day, hopefully refunded. But in a couple of months since then, we have gotten several very large updates for Starfield, and even earlier today, Bethesda laid out what the next major update would entail. A camera? Is, is that it? A, a camera? Is that the big update? Also, when all of these Starfield fanboys shills are saying, Oh, we had so many updates! The reality is... No. <laughs> no. Uh, what Bethesda calls big updates, typically for anyone other than Bethesda, is the equivalent of a minor bug, bug, uh, bug patch. You know, they fix like 10 bugs or something like that and call it a day. No real gameplay updates, no real rebalancing, no real anything. Uh, just, just bug fixes. And, well, this is how Bethesda works. They fix a bug, two new bugs are introduced, and 50-50 coin flip that the bug that they said they fixed, they haven't. The Asteroid Companion, for example. Bethesda claimed four times now that it's fixed. Yes. Three times they said it's fixed, it wasn't. Four times the charm, boys. Four times the charm. And their biggest updates have been uh, FOV slider, two months into the game. That's horrible. And the funniest part about the FOV slider is the fact that everyone knew that uh, Bethesda is not going to implement it at the start of the game for some stupid reason. And everyone's going to ask for that first thing when the game launches. Which is the exact thing that happened. And it took them two months to implement an FOV slider. Then it's the eat button and after that there's no legitimate gameplay updates. Nice. And there are even new rumors starting to pop up that a DLC announcement or even mod support could be imminent. And while I am sure that many of you are curious about what on earth is going on nice. with Starfield, I was also wondering, what on earth is going on with your diet? Why are you spending so much time cooking instead of gaming? Well, today we're- Do not buy any of these stupid things. 
with your phone. The major happenings around Starfield in 2024 have really been its updates. We got a major update in January and a smaller but still critical update in February. The January update was the real big one beyond having a ton of bug wow. fixes. The main focus of this one was a variety of visual overhauls. 73 specifically. Look at that. Visual we actually went over this. If you think that they actually made a lot of locations look worse. Yeah. That's what the visual updates did. Some things cannot be distinguished uh, uh, before and after. And some places are just flat out worse because, well, what do you expect from Bethesda? Locations got their lighting improved, so this wasn't a comprehensive. Yeah, look at this. This is the lighting improvement. I, I think he's showing a lighting improvement. Okay. Proved. So, this so which one is before, which one uh, is after? Tell me, tell me. Is this good? No. Locations got their lighting improved. And voila, uh, they just they 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 just made everything brighter, which doesn't. It's is this better? Well, Bethesda claims it is. I personally am not sure. So this wasn't a comprehensive lighting overhaul for the game, but instead these specific areas had things reworked. And while some of these are largely minor, oh look at that, uh, lamp. I don't. Wait, where is this even coming from? Um, can someone explain the sh how shadows work here? What? Why? I mean, wh where are the shadows coming? Well, how does this work? How does this part work? More tweaks than a full-on improvement. Some of the impacted locations did get a genuine improvement and just look oh, far better visually. Better. And while this wasn't a comprehensive lighting overhaul, with how many areas were impacted, you'll definitely notice some of these improvements as you're adventuring around. But some no, you will not, because in general, it's still shit. Some of the space visuals also got upgrades. Lens flare and the star visual overall were improved, so now you could actually see the circular outline of that distant sun. Previously, this was beyond our rendered distance, so you couldn't really make it out. And while this does sound relatively wow. minor, it honestly is a major improvement for the game. I find myself far more often just stopping and watching the sunset because things look dramatically better. And there are even some better interactions with stars, planets, and planetary rings. So each of those will properly interact now. Water reflections were improved with this update. This is genuinely quite nice for New Atlantis specific. There's like two places in the world where there is water. And you don't know this at any way. And by the way, did they add water physics? Of course not. <laughs> Of course not. Typically, as you see quite a bit of water here, but perhaps the single most important change for this one was around character visuals. They finally overhauled other NPC faces so that uncanny staring and general oddities and face visuals are basically gone now. Is this... is this the upgraded version? I can't tell. NPCs in Starfield are finally starting to look like just generic NPCs that you could walk by and not think. Is this the update? Is... is this the good version? Think about, but Starfield's most recent update, which I'm just so dropped confused. a little over a week ago, may be the more important one for a. That looked still so horrendously bad. A lot of you. The February patch notes weren't the longest, but three massive changes came from this. FSR3 frame generation as well as Intel XESS were added. Specifically, the addition of FSR3 is gigantic, as this will lead to a massive performance boost for most PC players, and unlike with DLSS frame generation, FSR3 is not locked to a specific GPU. This is kind of funny because there's not really any frames to be generated in the, these locations, but that's cool. So nearly all of you watching right now can use this one and basically just got a free FPS upgrade for Starfield on PC. For me, testing this in some of the major cities, I had nearly double the FPS I was getting previously. This put me at a comfortable 100 plus FPS in each major city, but also... Considering there's so little going on, I can't even actually tell the difference. When out adventuring or in combat, I was comfortably above 100 most of the time. But one of the wild takeaways from all of this is it almost seems like I'm on the low end of the FPS bonus. You can find tons of reports from players online that are seeing more than double FPS with FSR3, and several claim even being able to up their resolution to 4K and still able to maintain 60 FPS. It definitely took a little while, but Starfield's implementation of FSR3 is easily one of the best in gaming right now and of course the next major question is going to be okay yeah that's a lie okay cool but can it come to consoles could we finally see starfield running at 60 fps on xbox well sadly no fsr3 <laughs> uses ai to generate new frames in between existing 
Of course not. Interesting ones. So you need a lot of data to feed the AI, and AMD themselves recommend having a minimum frame rate of 60 FPS when using FSR 3. So like even before you turn it on, you're supposed to be getting 60 FPS to see the best bonuses. So it seems incredibly unlikely we'll see this on consoles anytime soon. But this update. So these are birds, by the way, but I don't know why they're exactly, uh, you know, acting like they can only be on ground. Uh, but I didn't even know this game had birds. It did have another gigantic change as it finally resolved that lingering form ID issue. Now, upon loading a save, used form IDs are freed. Form IDs are all of the things you find in Starfield and even in past Bethesda games. But with Starfield specifically, there was this issue where your form IDs would just continuously count upward. The game has a limit of around 2 million form IDs in total, and unlike past games, it wouldn't reuse old IDs once they were freed up, or at least previously that's how it worked. So you would play more, generate more form IDs, and gradually as you approach 2 million, you'd get increased instability and eventually your entire save would break. This was founded and reported by modders a couple of months ago, but thankfully- Thankfully, no one plays this game enough to actually this be an issue, okay? Most people are never gonna get to this. It was resolved with this most recent- This is like- 40 hours in into the same game. Update. And this means a couple of things. For those of you with save games with tons of hours played that never went through New Game Plus, you should almost certainly notice a nice boost in stability. If you were constantly crashing, that might be totally gone now. And in general, this was just a background ticking time bomb that would eventually break a bunch of saves, so it's really nice to see it getting resolved. But at least as of right now, that's kind of it. Bug fixes, visual- So, essentially, as always, the Bethesda update of uh, literally nothing happened. Upgrades, as well as a major performance bonus for a lot of you, are the main changes and improvements the game has gotten so far in 2024. If your problem with Starfield was around content or even content distribution, nothing's really changed on that front. <laughs> <laughs> so, the main problem about Starfield and being a complete shit game, a space exploration game without any space exploration, and when you do have space exploration, you try to skip it because it feels so ungodly bad. A role-playing game without any role-playing, and, well, a space game without any real space to explore. Man. Man, yeah. And the dialogue. Man, well, actually, the dialogue was a part of the role-playing, but that, oh, man. Yeah, uh, obviously. Starfield is never going to be fixed because how, you, you can't just r completely erase all of the dialogues. You can only get more dialogues from the geniuses who made this game and then went on Twitter tirades about Oh, you, you're just too stupid to understand the genius of our dialogue. Yeah, I guess I, guess I am too stupid as the rest of the world to understand the genius of your dialogue. It's... It probably requires a very high IQ to actually understand the dialogue in general, because it just seems like garbage speak most of the time. Although, earlier today, Bethesda also shared some new details on what the next major update will entail for this game. Next week, oh on March 6th, this new update will go into Steam Beta. It includes some new expressions that you could use in photo mode for both you as well as- Wow! Wow, look at this, you know. 20 years old game looking quality of facial expressions man this is good man bethesda knows how to save a game boys wow this this is a game changer time to reinstall starfield as other companions the scanner is getting improved so you'll be able to loot resources while the scanner is open setting course for an inactive mission will now make it active now the trick about looting resources while the scanner is open is the fact that no one who plays starfield for more than two hours cares about any of these resources because uh, you have infinity extremely cheap in-game resources in every city in a shop okay the more important part oh by the way someone also mentioned this last video ha but they still haven't added a town map right no they have not no they have not you still have no maps no way of telling where the hell you are in the city because obviously small but definitely really nice across an entire playthrough as well as a variety of other bug fixes are mentioned here so another nice update but honestly if the other two i just highlighted aren't getting you playing again i don't really think this one will be <laughs> but even beyond what was just shared today we do have a rough idea of what else is coming to starfield in 2024 oh, because back in man. december bethesda laid out their plans for starfield in 2024 overall they described a planned update cadence of every six weeks and described how these okay. updates would include city maps new ways to travel new ways to customize your ships 
new gameplay options to further adjust difficulty, official mod support with the launch of Creations, and our first wow. story expansion, Shattered Space. So of course, as of right now- Dude, I can't wait for Shattered Space, okay? I, I, I want Shattered Space so badly. So badly. It's gonna probably be the worst thing ever. Now, as we approach this new March update, we haven't actually seen any of this, but quite a few of those things- Shattered Space is gonna be made by the same people who made this and called it an absolute success, and went into uh, comment sections and started fights with people who said, I don't like the game. And then they called them stupid for not playing the way that they intended or something like that. It was great. It was great. So, you know, Shattered Space, is going to be big, boys. It's going to be big. Things could end up being pretty exciting and definitely could change up gameplay in notable ways. New ways to travel is definitely a big one. A way to avoid these absurdly long walks after... More loading screens, probably. Landing would be really big for quality of life. I expect we'll see some type of improved jetpack to facilitate this, but maybe it ends up being a mountable creature, even rovers. Crudely made rovers were seen in the official Starfield art book, so no. maybe they'll try and add in something like that. The next most exciting core game feature is further difficulty options. A full-on survival mode could really... You know what happens when they add rovers, right? The thing about Starfield is... Let's look at this a little bit sooner. Okay, let's let, let's look at this. See? This planet, how do you traverse it on a rover? Because the terrain is poorly designed and you probably can't really drive on it properly. And the obvious thing is the rocks. Most planets have an ungodly amount of rocks on them, so traversing with a rover is not an actual option. It it just it would probably just ruin the experience even more. Because to make a rover viable, they need to flatten out the surfaces a lot in some cases, and then they need to remove the rocks, which would mean that the planets are going to be even more barren. Like, no planets are going to have anything on their surfaces at this point. That pack to facilitate this, but maybe it ends up through difficulty options. A full-on survival mode could really up the fun you could have while playing. Uh, it would not. But something else is looming, as it's becoming increasingly likely that one of the next major updates for Starfield is going to include mod support. If not this March 6th update, perhaps the one after that, especially as that's getting us very close to patch- Considering how many modders said, yeah, Starfield is so bad and sad that I'm not even gonna try, I, I don't know if mod support is gonna help. 2.0. But that's the hat. Also, it's gonna be paid mods, okay? You need to understand, it's paid mods, baby. Has said several times now that mod support would be arriving to Starfield in early 2024. And from SteamDB, we could see that in early February, a new Starfield branch went up with CT Staging QA. This is very likely going to be Creation Staging QA. Creations is Bethesda's new word for mods. With Skyrim, they combined paid and free mods into one space, and this is what Creations are. It'll seemingly be continued into Starfield. Beautiful. Just a week ago now, another- I told you. I thought what, what did you think you're gonna get free shit? <laughs> Pay pig. A new branch went up with CT Beta Verified Creator. This likely being Creations Beta for Verified Creators. Verified Creators are the mod authors officially approved by Bethesda to post paid mods for Skyrim. Yeah, and by the way, I'm, I'm gonna rehash this, but the paid mod creators for Skyrim is so hilarious. Because this is my prediction of what's gonna happen. Since Bethesda needs to actually verify people who can upload here, because the first time, the first time uh, they added paid mods, they got rid of them. But that wasn't because, oh, the player based community are up in a riot, they don't want to pay for mods. Bethesda did never care about you losers, okay? Pfft. They didn't remove it because of that. They moved it because of legal issues, because people were up uploading things like HD dirt that wasn't even actually an update that didn't change anything for money and probably was stolen from someone. They had absolutely no protection against theft, uh, blatant lies, and things like that. So that that's why they stopped the mod thing. And now, well, this is the consequences. Only verified approved people are going to be able to upload mods. Well, you know what that means. Someone's going to get verified. And they're just going to ask people to pay them money so they upload their mods for them. Because other mod creators are not going to be able to uh, upload these mods. So they're going to have to pay 
a percent of the profit the, their mod up, uh, makes after uploaded to the guy who uploads it. That's what's gonna happen. It's gonna be a black, uh, a black market cartel essentially of mod uploading. It's gonna be great, boys. There's marketplace. I see no way that this is gonna backfire and come become a complete shit show. But there's the good on you. That's 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 the way to think with your head. Yes. And seemingly, at least based off this, it very much so sounds like they're getting early access to Starfield's creation kit to perhaps make free and paid mods for Starfield. So it looks like this is imminent. It seems like there are people. You know what's my, one of my favorite parts about Starfield lore-wise, by the way? It's the fact that in this game's lore, there are mechs. Okay? They're, yes, there's they're, they're, they're giant death robots, but they're outlawed. And my favorite part about this is, well, they're outlawed because they're dangerous. But we see them at random locations throughout planets and whatnot. And why do the evil space pirates not use them? Because they're outlawed! It's illegal to use them! Of course the space pirates that pirate and do things like that are not gonna use them. Are you crazy? They're outlawed! Oh, man. It's great, isn't it? It's just, it's just beautiful. All outside of official Bethesda employees that are getting access to the creation kit and able to start toying with modding Starfield. And to me, the most telling aspect of all this is this new DLC entry. A few days ago, Starfield had a new entry added into its downloadable content section on Steam. Lots of articles popped up speculating this could mean a shattered space release very soon, but I don't actually think that, and instead, I think this is all around creations. Because if you look- Bro, I need shattered space, okay? I need shattered space so soon. But the reality is they're probably going to add the paid mods. They're going to stabilize the paid mods. That's going to be the only thing they actually try and update. <laughs> if Fallout 76 has shown us anything, it's the fact that the game can suffer. The game can burn the hell all they can. But the, but the shop, man, that's going to work like that's going to work better than your than your whole life, boy. OK. And after the shop is balanced and ready to go, then they're going to launch the expansion, which I can't wait for. Again, it's going to be great. I'm going to have so... I'm going to upload 10 Starfield videos a day, boys. It's going to be wild. Over on the Skyrim side, you can see Creations have an entire page where you can just buy points, and it is included on the DLC section. Hell I think this yeah. this is just the exact same thing being set up for Starfield. And to me, this is further evidence that paid and free mods will drop at the same time. Why is why is the spacer in a corner? Well, no one knows. Ask the Starfield AI that's barely holding it together. Dude, if someone's gonna make Terminator, it's gonna be probably uh, Bethesda with their shitty coding, okay? Time for Starfield. And it'll be interesting to see what exactly this entails. If this really is full-on creations, free and paid mods at once, that could have a big impact on Starfield modding. Paid mods have really never been an option from day one, despite Bethesda's numerous attempts at implementing them. You'll have the creation kit release, but then also an application form to apply to make paid mods. And I imagine there's going to be quite a few people that don't really want to make free mods if that option's immediately available. Even further, God, I think that tunnel just fully encapsulated all my hate for Starfield in general. Like, like, look at this. Look at this. Eh, dude, on every wall there's something. There, there, there is literally not a single panel of wall free from some kind of random fucking garbage added on top of it for no reason. They, they ground. It's not Starfield if there's not a tarp, a box, or a cable on the ground. Oh, but cables and those things are the on the I I have not found a single location in Starfield in my life where there has not been 50 years of shit on the floor. Never been an option for like, look at one. This. Look at this. Despite Bethesda. Look, 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 look at this. You, see, you saw that? It's really never been an option from day one. Okay, so there's a vent here for some reason. Why? God knows. There's a poster here, okay? Why? God knows. There's a no there, there's now a fan there. Why? I don't know. Uh, there's this trolley of, I don't know, buckets for some reason. On, despite Bethesda's... The, 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 you saw that? Those were boxes. There's more boxes. There's numerous... There's, there's boxes everywhere. Look at these valves. Why are they there? I don't know. It's a temp Look at this pipe. There's just a random pipe. An implement Another air conditioner. Another pipe. More valves. 
Like, who, which five-year-old designed this garbage? It's AI generated, by the way, but you get the point. You'll have the creation kit released, but then also- Look at this, uh, th this thing, why is it dead? I don't know. So an application form to apply to make paid money. Look at this. Uh, on on all the things they've stuck. Imagine the Why? Just going Look at this. More more. It just Be goes quiet. on. Ah, oh, it's so bad. I'm surprised there was no. Oh Can wait 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 wait. There, there, there is there is another air conditioning unit. Because how can you have a room without 20 air conditioning units? And look at this. Another box on the floor. Why? I don't know. And this is literally all of Starfield's design. It's great. I love it. Every location looks like it's a frat boy fraternity house where a woman has never entered. People that don't really want- Man, this is so sad. Wanna make free mods if that option's immediately available. Even further, as I covered late last year, many mod authors have major concerns over the moddability of Starfield. Simply put, major portions of the game were not designed with modding in mind, which is quite a con- yeah, and Todd Howard lied that this is. It, it was. <laughs> Contrast compared to how things were with Fallout 4 and Great. Skyrim. So these issues may have been resolved by Bethesda, but they also may not have been. As a result, modding on release may be a bit more restrictive. Look at this. Restrictive compared L look at this loading, dog. There's so much random MacGuffins just scattered all over here. Who? Why? Who placed them here? How does this make sense? It doesn't. It pisses me off. ...to what we had for Fallout 4 and Skyrim. But the simple reality is, as of right now, we don't know. Yeah, look at this. Everywhere. Tires. Tires for what? I'm speculating and trying to make some informed decisions based off of... Another trolley in the ladder. Again, oh, I hate Starfield so much. ...what I've heard from other mod authors. But frankly, when it comes to Starfield modding, there are just a ton of unanswered questions. But by the looks of things... Okay, how long can he go in this direction without seeing a tarp? So we'll have some answers relatively soon. Beyond that, we're of course getting Starfield's first expansion... Again, look at this. There's... There's a billion... Again, three billion everything. At some point in 2024, many of you watching likely already bought this expansion. If also, the AI is just great. How did- what happened to that guy? No one knows. He purchased early access with the premium edition. The expansion was included with that. As of right now, we really have no idea when this may be dropping. Many speculated it would come early into 2024, but at this point- Look at this office building. I think a summer release is looking a bit more likely. Xbox and Bethesda honestly have- look, look, look at this place. Like, why is there all of this have here? a lot going on right why, why is there a railing here for some magical reason? WHY?! Right now, between Avowed, the Fallout 4 next-gen update and TV show, a potential Oblivion remaster, and of course... The Oblivion remaster is gonna be even worse than Starfield, by the way. I do not think Morrowind and Oblivion are games that can be remastered, okay? The, you, you can't just update the graphics and call it a day, people will hate it. These are games that I have fond memories of because I played Morrowind, didn't play Oblivion, by the way, just Morrowind. And I liked it as a kid, but I would probably, I would hate it as uh, now. It's gonna fail. This expansion, so I would be shocked if we start to see some different or more unusual release dates being employed just because of how much content they seemingly have releasing. Although we did see past reports that suggest Starfield had a longer than usual QA time, so perhaps work on this expansion actually begun relatively early. The Microsoft brought, by the way, the reason why uh, Starfield is touted, uh, if you did not know, as the least buggy Bethesda game ever, which I guess is true, but it doesn't say a lot, because calling something a Bethesda game is essentially the equivalent of having five children in front of you, and one of them is retarded and needs a helmet, otherwise he's already bashing his head into the flower ground ceiling or pick one okay that is bethesda the the special needs kid with the special safety helmet otherwise he's gonna accidentally off himself that that's what means still the least buggy bethesda experience and the, the reason why it wasn't the least buggy by the way is because microsoft held it back like i think it was a year or two years or something to just fix bugs can you imagine what would have happened if uh, if Microsoft didn't buy Bethesda? By the way, a purchase that they probably regret considering how shit everything they have done is. Because uh, Star Starfield's failure, absolute unparalleled failure I should say, has made it so that a lot of people are no longer interested in Elder Scrolls 6.
because it's going to be on the same engine where Starfield is, which means that the graphics are already 10 to 20 years outdated, even though it's a modern, uh, modern game. And it's going to be written and made by the same idiots who thought that, well, whatever happened in Starfield was a splendid idea. So, yeah, irreversible damage. And without Microsoft, Starfield would have been probably a bigger buggy mess than 76. And 76 was god-awful. Early into 2023, maybe a release is coming sooner than we realize. But of course, even beyond that, there is the big elephant in the room with how many people will actually care about all of this. Like, okay, at least some of you. You right now are watching a Starfield video, so you care. But do you care yes, enough to I actually do. play it? Despite Starfield no. having the biggest launch in Bethesda history and getting glowing reviews from critics, things on the community side have definitely been sliding. The Starfield player count is now less than Fallout 76 on both Xbox and Steam. It's actually surprising that they're above 5k at this point, but that's cool. Although Fallout 76 did just have an event to bolster up player numbers, we next- <laughs> Actually, since that event, Hilarious. Starfield has retaken the number one spot above Fallout 76. I mean, the, uh, this is Xbox, by the way, and yes, as you can see, uh, Xbox has so many players that Farming Simulator is literally in the top 10. There you go, okay? And Halo Infinite, which is a remarkably hated Halo game with nothing going for it, is in the first position. You need to understand how bad things really are. Six. But I think even just the fact that this is getting competitive is not a great sign for Starfield. And the Steam reviews have been dropping for this game. The overall has been mixed for a while, but now also just 59% positive. So that means 40% of the overall Starfield reviews are saying that you shouldn't be playing this game. And it's not like this is improving. Yeah. The recent reviews are even worse, with just 42% being positive. So That's actually more than I expected, Jesus Christ. Some people are probably playing it for like 30... Dude... I said this previously, I kind of understand the people who play Starfield and are like, wow, this is actually pretty cool because they have never played anything like this before. You know, they come from, you know, Call of Duty or whatever. If you're coming from Call of Duty, the options that Starfield provides are probably like completely groundbreaking to you. But that's the problem because you don't know what actually good is. And when you have no concept of what actually good things are, people tend to associate shit as good, actually. That's the problem here. So yeah, if you're a Call of Duty player and you're, you're going to Starfield and you're like, Oh, all of this freedom. I have never seen that before. Yeah, you're probably going to unironically think that it's at least kind of good, okay? But the thing is, you try playing something like Fallout 4, Fallout 3, or New Vegas, the golden jewel of everything, Bethesda, that never made, by the way. You're gonna be like, oh, wow, Fallout, fa Fallout, no, Starfield is shit. Because the moment you actually try something good, and you have played it, and you know how it is, and you just see Starfield, you're instantaneously disappointed for life. About 60% of recent reviews are telling people not to play this one. The updates have definitely been making a difference here. A few weeks ago, the recent Hell Starfield no. reviews dropped all the way down to mostly negative, which is pretty disastrous. But it seems like likely due to some of these more recent updates, things have returned to mixed, which is definitely a good sign for Bethesda. But overall, things are still trending downwards. The recent reviews are more negative than the overall reviews. It does make me wonder if mod support and further updates will be enough to reignite interest in this game. No. one of the issues I personally noticed with content around Starfield is people just lost interest very quickly. This video is a prime example. Hell no, people did not lose interest very quickly, okay? People have a lot of interest in Starfield. How bad it is. How absolutely atrocious it is. Like, dude, I have so much- I had so much fun just shitting on Starfield day in and day out. It was great. People loved that. People just don't like uh, people shilling for Starfield and saying, Oh my god, they did one bug fix in three months. They are the most hardworking people I have ever seen in my life. For me, nearly everything I was posting around this point was getting around 100,000 views in the first 24 hours. But just... Yeah, Joe said, because you mainly post uh, cyberpunk mod compilations. 
and this is just the Starfield chill video. Obviously, people are not going to be interested in another video that's saying, Oh my god, Bethesda's doing so great with Starfield, while everyone hates Starfield. Obviously. Just two months after release, a video covering the best new mods for Starfield couldn't even pull half that viewership. Obviously, because one, there are no mods for Starfield. <laughs> two, no one likes Starfield. Three, there's, 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 there's no need for a three, honestly, is there? So now, of course, this is a super niche and very specific example. It really can't be extrapolated all No, not really. I upload a video hating on Starfield, and it's actually doing better than even at the peak of hating Starfield. Be why? Because, well, now there's less people hating on Starfield, and Starfield is just so unbelievably hateable. All that much, but at the same time, I think it's an important one. Starfield mods, I thought, were going to be my bread and butter for several months and really several years. But just two months after release, I was struggling to pull even average viewership on Starfield content. And speaking to other creators, this exact same sentiment was shared. A lot of yeah, I understand that. And he probably talked with people like Open World and stuff like that. And these are all Bethesda Shield channels. Yeah. Obviously, it's not going to go well for the verse Bethesda game. A lot of people were just having problems with Starfield content that wasn't negative getting views. I feel like this is this odd intangible metric beyond player count. It just kind of feels like not that many people are interested in or talking about this game compared to some of the past ones. So it does leave me wondering, is this something Bethesda can renew with more updates and mod support? And frankly, I don't know. At the very least, I think there are several things around Starfield that can be improved, whether this be via updates or mods. A lot of the game's exploration is pretty straightforward and predictable. Right now, it lacks that special moment of discovery other Bethesda games had, at least for me. To me, it feels like Starfield is missing that sense of journey. Load screens hinder that and make particularly long journeys feel exactly the same as relatively short ones. It's a load screen simulator, baby. You need to uh, bypass three loading screens to get a lo to the location you want to go to on another planet. Three loading screens? I'm not even kidding. The literally three loading screens. It's crazy. Sometimes four if you're being inefficient. So while I do have moments where I am taking a bath and an unskippable 10 second uh, strap into a chair cutscene that serves no purpose. Back due to the beauty of a planet or scene, oftentimes this ends up just being surface level. It's not like there's much more- to How is this even beautiful? ...to do with that outside of just look at it for a moment. Compared to past- but is, this, is this even beautiful? I'm sorry, what was the beautiful part about this? I'm kind of confused. As the games, it doesn't feel like there is that reward for running over to what I am seeing and experiencing it properly. But this can definitely be resolved. More dynamic or interesting points of interest are definitely possible. And even if Bethesda doesn't add this officially, modders almost certainly will. I imagine once the creation kit comes, one of the first things we get are new explorable locations. The economy is another just massive pain to deal with. The waiting for vendors to restock, stealing <laughs> ships is relatively easy but doesn't pay particularly well and the real core of money making methods quite literally just being to wait a lot especially since starfield doesn't have scrapping so you can't really just store or sell the gear you find a rework here would really go a long way for this game and it is something i could see get seriously expanded via mods dude i haven't even mentioned that the, the ui is like 15 steps backward from fallout 4 it's it, this game does nothing even on a baseline good turning Starfield into more of an RTS with some of the outpost functionality. But even when it does come to certain notable locations, it feels like you really just have a baseline level interaction there and a greater degree of depth is missing. The Red Mile overall feels like it should be ripe with gambling, unique interactions, and some very memorable runs. One reality- Hell no, the strip club in uh, Neon was just a bunch of dudes in stupid costumes. Like that, bro, there's no blood in this game even. They're, they're so afraid. It's pretty straightforward and surface level. You run the same route over and over again and get an award if you do it enough. It's not even timed and just a matter of doing it a bunch of times more so than anything. But this too, if Bethesda and modders add in more features, things can easily be improved here. The odd part about this though is as of right now, we really don't have any indication that stuff like this will be upgraded or updated by Bethesda. They already laid out their plans for 2024 and a lot of the major complaints around the game aren't in these plans. So I definitely think this is a situation where you have <laughs> nice. to keep your expectations in check. This is what Bethesda is adding. If you want something beyond this, you'll very likely just be relying on modders. Dude, look at that. City maps. Wow! 
Uh, new ways to travel. It's going to be disappointing. New ways to customize your ship. No one cares about the ship because ship battles are integrally a completely different part of the game. That, okay, if your character gets stronger, you feel it in combat. But then all the ship combat also gets uh, harder. And you're behind on ship combat because you need to specially dedicate time to improving ship combat, which is stupid, painful, and annoying. So, yeah, ship customization, big fail. New gameplay options to further adjust difficulty. Uh, no one cares. It's a stun log game. Official mod support with no one cares. Our first story expansion. That's what we want to see, though. That's, that's what I'm talking about, baby. Although, one of the other weird stories to pop up recently around Starfield is whether or not this is coming to PlayStation. We've of course had a bunch of rumors from fairly reputable sources that Starfield was in fact coming to PS5 as a part of a new initiative from Xbox. Shortly thereafter, we had Xbox execs confirm that no, this wasn't actually happening and instead four other games Lies. were going over. But I don't think this is the entire story. The sheer number of reports of Starfield going to PlayStation coupled with the head of Xbox saying that they'll learn from these initial games going over makes me think that this definitely still could happen. It would not shock me at all if Starfield was a game they were considering releasing on PlayStation, but then it leaked and got a cataclysmic level of pushback and Xbox finalized their plans without Starfield going over. They're bringing over these initial games, and if they are a success, I could absolutely- The Xbox fans were, uh, were pissed that the Starfield, their big exclusive, is going to PlayStation. PlayStation fans were pissed that the piece of shit like Starfield is going over to their platform. It's great. It it's just it's just comedy in its purest form. Anyway, I think that's it for Juice Head. Man, what a time to be alive. God, I love Starfield. It, it just makes my day so much better when there's Starfield on the menu, boys. Anyway, this was Quizzer Citizen. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, and have a nice day. Bye bye.